great music. Hi, everybody. Welcome to the Music Corner. I'm Jonathan Kiyu. I'll be your host for this program here. We're going to take 30 minutes and help you become a better guitar player. So grab your guitar. And for this episode, I'm going to ask that you grab a pencil and paper, too. You're going to need it, and you'll be glad that you have it handy. So grab a pencil and paper, and uh, of course, grab your guitar. Let's get started. Today's episode is called Mastering the Fretboard. And we're going to focus on the sixth string, the E string, the heavy E string of the guitar. Mastering the fretboard sounds like a pretty huge task, and it is. That's why we're going to take one string at a time. Uh, what I'm going to show you is how to master the sixth string, and also why it's important. And both those things are uh, going to take up quite a bit of time. So settle in and let's get started. So mastering the fretboard, what we're talking about for starters is naming every note on your heavy E string, also known as the sixth string. Okay, now it is important that you know the name of every note on every fret of that string. It's not hard once you learn the system, and there is a system to it. Knowing that there's a system going in is going to help you quite a bit. Now, you might already know the names of the notes on the sixth string. If you do, fantastic. Stick around because I'm going to show you what you can do with that information. But in case you don't, let's get started. So, fat string, also known as the E string, also known as the sixth string. Not surprisingly, when you play that string, you get the note E. So there's our E right there. First fret, F. Let's focus in on the left hand here. First fret is a note F. Now, what I want you to do is don't simply play along with me. I want you to take that pencil and paper and just write F1. Because forever and ever and ever now, I want you to associate the letter F with the number one. This is the memorization part of today's class. F1. That's the note F. Now, I'm going to glide up to three. G3. Again, make a note of that. G3. So, so far we have E, which is zero. Let's write that down to E0. F at one. G at 3. Now we're skipping over 2, but don't worry, we'll get back to that number 2 shortly. Let's keep on going up the neck. A5, write that down, A5. It's the note A. But that can help you do a lot more than simply play the note A. It's, we're gonna, in a few minutes, we're going to unlock a whole lot of information. Let's keep going. We're going to skip over 6. B7, B7. So let's review what we have so far. E0. F1, G3, A5, you with me? B7. Now here things get exciting, hold on to your head. So far we've been skipping over frets, right? We've skipped over two, four, and six. All of a sudden now, B is going to turn into the note C without skipping over a fret. We're talking about B7, C8, B7, C8. You have to memorize this. B7, C8. Okay, write it down. C8. We've only got a couple more to go before we begin uh, filling in the missing spaces here. D10. D like dog. D10. And lastly, E12. And almost every guitar I've ever seen has two dots at the 12th fret. See that right there? Two dots at the 12th fret. Now my guitar just happens to have two at seven. Some do, some don't. But two dots of the 12th fret. 12 is the note E. And if you've been paying attention, you know that we started with E0. So now we have two E's to work with. We have E0 and E12. And those two dots are significant. Those two dots are there to sort of remind us that we've come, to the, we've come full circle. We're back to the note E again. So almost every guitar has something special. Usually it's a couple of dots at the 12th fret. There are 12 notes in all of music. Okay, we just named a handful of them right there. By the time you get to 12, you made it to 12, you've made it back around full circle, alphabetically. So, I'm going to do a quick recap, and then we're going to start filling in the blanks. E0, F1, G3, A5, B7, C8, we've changed over the even numbers here, D10, and finally full circle, to E12. Now the guitar clearly does not look like a circular instrument, but music has a circle, circular kind of nature to it, meaning the uh, musical alphabet moves around A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and then it begins again, A, B, C, D, E, F, G. So in that sense, we're looking at a circle, even though physically, of course, the guitar is very linear. 
All right, so you're with me so far? Hopefully you've written down those, those uh, names and numbers. Filling in the blanks. We're going to look at the second fret on your heavy string. Remember, today's episode, what we're working with today, is all featuring the, uh, the fat string. And before long, I'm going to show you how you can apply this knowledge to open up a lot of things involving all the strings. Okay, second fret on your heavy string. Go ahead and play that note with me. Now, if you remember, the first fret was F, the third fret was G. So what's this? Alphabetically, there's no letter in between, right? The in-between note, we're going to call that an accidental. The accidental right here has two possible names depending on how you look at it. Now don't worry, there's a, there's a system here. Whenever there's a system in place, we all feel better about that, right? Well, here's the system. If we look at that note as being the next note higher up from F, we're going to call that note F sharp. Okay, second fret F sharp. We have F, we could call it F natural. We want to sound really musically educated. F natural at one. F sharp at two. Piece of cake, right? Three is G. Four would be G sharp. Make sense? Five is A. Six is A sharp. Seven is B. And then remember, this is special here. B and C are neighbors. Seven B, eight C. Okay? Now, what we just did there is we filled in the blanks. We had uh, F at fret number one, F sharp at fret number two. So let's pause right there. You might want to take a second and write some of this down. It's a good idea. Some things on the, the guitar are easy to learn uh, visually or, or uh, you know, audibly. You can hear what's going on. In this case, I highly recommend writing this stuff down because memorizing it is so useful. It's pretty much mandatory if you're going to move on to being a more advanced guitar player. Okay, so, so far we've talked about F and F sharp and G and G sharp. I'm going to pause for a second to point out something that I kind of glossed over in the beginning for a reason, but I want to come back to it right now. We talked about zero is the note E, right? Zero meaning no left hand, the note E. And one is the note F. There's nothing in between E and F. Now this goes true for any instrument, any place on the guitar, any E you ever play on the guitar. E and F are neighbors in the exact same way that B and C are neighbors. Remember B and C, seven and eight? E and F, 0, 1. Or if you're taking notes, you know that 12 was also E, therefore 13 is F. No sharp note in between. So here's how you remember this detail. Because these are two exceptions, right? B and C and E and F are two exceptions. You ready? B and C, think of them as best chums. You can't separate them. B and C. B leads right to C. And E and F, everlasting friends. Again, you can't separate E and F. They're everlasting friends. If E is zero, which it is, F is number one. Okay? Now that's an exception to our little system that you just have to memorize. B and C cannot be divided by any other note, and E and F cannot be divided by any other note. Okay? Everything else, though, has that sharp note in between. F, F sharp. G, G sharp. A, A sharp. Okay? And yeah, you do have to memorize this, but trust me, this is a, a, huge, uh, a huge step in becoming a lot better at the guitar quickly. All right? Now, if you're paying attention, you might remember me saying that F sharp I played at the second fret has two names. Now, we're, gonna, we're about to give it its second name, and I apologize in advance. It's hard enough remembering all this stuff without having a second name, but here comes the second name. All those sharp notes could be called by their flat names. What does that mean? Well, I describe F sharp as being one fret higher up the fretboard from F. And that is a good way to describe it, F, F sharp. But if we describe it as uh, one step this direction, one fret this direction, from a higher number down to a lower number, we call it by its flat name. Don't get scared, I'm gonna keep it simple here. We know that three is G, right? Three G. If you think of our second fret as being one backwards from G, the name is G flat. It sounds the same as F sharp, it looks the same as F sharp, everything about it is the same. But the way music has developed, we have two different possible names for that note right there, second fret on the fat string. We can call it F sharp, we can call it G flat. Just have to learn it, just have to memorize it, okay? So watch this. I'm gonna start on my B7, okay, B7. If I go backwards, one to six, name is now B flat. We have A5, 
and A flat at four. G at three, G flat at two. Okay, now this is kind of confusing. So take a minute, digest it. Those sharp notes also have a flat name. Which you call it doesn't matter for our purposes today. In fact, I'd be thrilled to know that you have both those names in your head and that you can identify that note with both of its names. F sharp is the same as G flat. G sharp is the same as A flat. A sharp is the same as B flat and so on, okay? So for our purposes today, we're calling those notes the accidentals. Those of you who have a piano handy, those are the black keys on the piano. The black keys are the ones with the two names, the flat, sharp notes. And the white keys are the ones with the alphabetical standard names like A, B, C, D, E, F, G. Now, we're take, gonna take a quick break from actually naming the notes and show you some reasons why it's so important to know the names of the notes specifically on the sixth string. I chose the sixth string for today's episode for a reason, because so much of our perspective on the guitar, so much of what we can do on the guitar, is based on knowledge of the sixth string. Even if we're not playing that string for that particular moment, simply knowing the name of, of each note at each fret goes a, a long way towards helping you play up and down the neck of the guitar, whether it's chords or scales or a cool combination, combination of the two. So come with me now to the A5. Okay, go ahead and put your pointer finger on that A5 note right there. Let's focus in maybe a little bit on the left hand. A5. Easy, right? Now, with my knowledge of that, I can do a lot with my left hand. This is great for uh, writing songs, for playing along with other people. As long as I know that A5 is sort of my headquarters, I can turn that note A into an A power chord. or a three finger power chord. That's five, seven, seven. I can turn it into an A bar chord by stretching across that point of finger at A. That's an A major bar chord. An A minor bar chord by letting my middle finger come off the guitar. There's a lot of things I can do and I'm gonna keep going through these. I don't expect you to, to remember or to memorize all these things, although some of them you may be familiar with, but I just wanna show you how simply knowing that the number five, the fifth fret, and the note A are one and the same, it helps you perform a lot of different things on the guitar. So let's put a pointer finger there again. We talk about the A power chord, five, seven. Or adding on an extra note, five, seven, seven. So say I know the, the rest of the band is playing an A uh, chord in that particular moment in the song. Well, an A power chord sometimes can sound great to play along you know, with the rest of the band. How do I know where an A power chord is? It all comes down to knowing my sixth string, mastering the fretboard starting on the sixth string. In fact, wherever I put that point of finger, for any power chord, that note on the sixth string is the name of the power chord. Remember G3? Well, there's a G power chord. Or C8, C8, there's a C power chord right there, eighth fret. Your knowledge of the sixth string, your ability to name those notes can help you slide power chords up and down the neck. And power chords are just one of many examples we're about to talk about, okay? But say a song goes uh, from G to A, back and forth as power chords. Here's my G note, here's my A note, and I have I'm taking the same information, moving it up and down the neck based on my knowledge of the sixth string. Okay, let's talk about some other examples. Find that A at five for me. This time, let's, um, let's put your middle finger, and this is important, middle finger, A, five on the fat string. Let's do a quick um, major scale here. Some of you may be very familiar with major scales. All those of you, this may be your first time ever doing a major scale, watch this. Again, the middle finger five, that's super important. Five, seven, four, five, seven, four, six, seven. Don't worry, I'm gonna go through this slowly too, but listen to the net result. 
nice major scale based on five. Why is it based on five? Well, we're using 5A as our point of reference today. When you need an A major scale, all you have to do is put your middle finger on the note A, play the pattern, and you have it. If you want a G major scale, find the note G, play the pattern. A C major scale, find the note C, and play the pattern. But let's get back to the, the A major scale. As long as you know the names of the notes on the sixth string, you can play a major scale, any major scale that you'd ever need to play, whether it's for improvising, composing, you name it. Okay, so here's the pattern. Middle finger five, pinky seven. Okay, those are the first two notes on the uh, sixth string. You move over a string and the pattern is four, five, seven. Index, middle, pinky. And the last part of the process here, four, six, seven. Four, six, seven. Index, ring, pinky. Numerically, what you can write down or tell yourself is five, seven, four, five, seven, four, six, seven. Five, seven, four, five, seven, four, six, seven. And notice that every finger has its one position to be in. Index played any four that I needed. Middle played the fives. Ring played the six. I think there was only one sixth fret that I needed. And pinky played the sevens. Now today's lesson is not specifically about how to play a major scale, although you just learned one right there. But it's about orienting your, your uh, hand position on the guitar using the sixth string as your, as your uh, guide. Okay? So, let's take that thing I just did, the A major scale. Maybe I'm, I'm uh, using it to play a solo. I'm improvising uh, with a band using the A major scale. And maybe the song changes and it's more appropriate to improvise using a C major scale. Middle finger C. Remember C8? Middle finger C. Okay, I've got my C major scale ready to go. Same pattern as back there at five but a different combination of notes. When I say the same pattern, I'm talking about the order that your fingers move in. Eight, 10, seven, eight, 10, seven, nine, 10. I'm gonna do it slowly. Eight, remember you have to start with your middle finger, super important. Eight, 10 with your pinky, seven with your index. Eight, 10, seven, nine, 10. So, let's summarize what we've done so far. Anybody who knows the names of the notes on the sixth string, you can play power chords up and down the neck and knowing the names of each one, whether it's a F power chord based at the first fret, a D power chord based up here at the tenth fret, okay? And power chords are useful for lots of things. You can play major scales up and down the neck of the guitar, again, using the sixth string as your point of reference. Uh, how about G sharp at the fourth fret? G sharp major scale. How about a D flat major scale based on the ninth fret, a D flat major scale? Okay, I can take my pattern and move it anywhere up and down the neck and I'll always know the name of what I'm doing as long as I know the name of the note on the sixth string where I'm beginning the process. Now there's a lot more you can do. In fact, the two most common points of reference for guitar players as they play a variety of things on the guitar, whether it's lead guitar solos or rhythm guitar chords, they use the sixth string and the fifth string. Those are the two most common points of reference. Now the guitar can look like a pretty confusing kind of obstacle course, right? Of wire and wood. Uh, so you have to start somewhere getting your bearings. And I highly encourage you to, to do what we're doing today. Use the uh, sixth string as your frame of reference. I'm going to show you some more, uh, some more things you can do with this knowledge, but let's do a quick recap. I'm going to guide you from zero up to 12. Okay, one more time. In fact, we're going to go up to 13 for good luck, because if you understand what's happening zero through 12, what happens at 13 should be no surprise. Okay, ready? So follow along with me. Double check your paperwork. Make sure you're with me. Let's uh, focus on the left hand here. Zero, one is uh, E, oh, sorry, zero is the note E. Remember zero means no fret, right? One, F. Two, F sharp, 
also known as G flat. 3 G. 4 G sharp or A flat. 5 A. 6 A sharp or B flat. 7 B. Here's our exception. 7 B turns right into 8 C. B C. Remember best chums B C? 9. C sharp or D flat. 10 D. 11 D sharp or E flat. 12 E. Remember our double dots? And 13 F. Remember everlasting friends E F. So E and F cannot be separated from each other, and B and C can also not be separated. Now, what we're talking about today, by the way, this applies to really any instrument that you're, you're likely to play, whether it's piano, trumpet, flute, you name it. E and F are just neighbors. In our civilization, our Western uh, musical heritage, B and C are neighbors, and E and F are neighbors, and there's no note in between. Now there's other cultures around the world who get a little fancier with these uh, with, with their the system of notes. But we have 12 notes in our typical uh, Western music tradition. And among those 12 notes, one of the phenomena that you see is that B and C are inseparable and E and F are inseparable. And I use that term because F and G are separated by that in-between note. On the guitar it's very visual. You actually see there's a second fret. Of course, it must have some name, and now you know it has two possible names. Uh, and which name you call it is not important for today's purposes. But you know that second fret could be called F sharp or G flat, either way. Okay, so let's get back to actually applying this stuff. A moment ago I mentioned bar chords. Now bar chords are tricky. I've, I've uh, helped students uh, with bar chords for quite a few years now. Bar chords are very handy, very useful. Um, but they can be challenging for anybody of any age, no matter how big or small your fingers are, bar chords can be tricky. We've been using the A5 as our reference, so I want to stay there, okay, A5, an A major bar chord. Now we could do a whole program just on bar chords, but let's just begin and talk about them for a minute here. My index finger is stretching across all six strings, and years ago a student pointed out to me, they said, Jonathan, your, your finger's going way past the sixth string. And it never really occurred to me why I did that. And as I thought about it, I realized having that nice heavy knuckle involved right there really does help get a good solid grip. You can't see my thumb, but my thumb is behind the fretboard really squeezing hard. Now some people assume that you have to be able to squeeze so hard that you can get all six strings to ring clearly before you apply any other fingers to the mix. Well, that's not a bad goal, but these other fingers are going to be involved taking some of the burden off the index finger and getting a, a, a much happier sound as a result. So don't beat up on yourself if with one finger you're not at the point where you can get all strings to sound perfect and nice and ringing and clear. Okay, because these other fingers are going to be joining in. What I'm playing now is an A major bar chord. The three fingers that I just added on here, you know what they're like? They're like an E major chord. Remember good old E major? We usually do E major with uh, index ring and pinky. I'm doing it with middle ring and pinky. There's my E major chord. Imagine I have an invisible bar down here at zero. See that? And I'm going to glide up. And there's my A major bar chord. Now like I said, we could do a whole episode just on bar chords. But my point today is that the note A of the fifth fret helps me establish, or helps me place my A major bar chord. As long as I know A is located at the fifth fret, I've got my A major bar chord right there. I know C is based at eight, that's a note C. So here's my C major bar chord. Here's 10 D, my D major bar chord. Now say I was playing a song with a friend and they were playing, uh, maybe the chord progression went from uh, G to C to D. And if they are playing a more traditional G and C, and C and D, open position chords, that they're named open position chords because they have open strings as part of their uh, part of their sound. Well, maybe I'll instead of doing the exact same thing as them, maybe I'd play them as bar chords, G, C, and D bar chords. You know, for a different sound, add something to the mix. Well, as long as I know that G is located at three and C is eight and D is ten, 
I can play my G, C, and D as bar chords like this. And we do four strums on each. And back to G. Okay? Opens up a lot of possibilities. I tell my students, you paid for the whole guitar, you might as well use it up and down the neck, right? Even though a lot of us spend a lot of time right down here, uh, and you make lots of beautiful music within the first three or four frets of the guitar, it's fun to move around a bit. And the best way to move around is simply knowing the names of the notes on the sixth string. Now before it's time to go, I want to mention that I always encourage you to send an email or, write a, uh, or give us a phone call. Um, if you have any questions about what we're doing on today's program, I'd love to hear from you. Uh, again, you're watching The Music Corner, and my name is Jonathan Kiyu. Today's program has been uh, called Mastering the Fretboard, focusing specifically on the sixth string, the E string. Okay? Uh, we'll do another program focusing on the fifth string, the A string, because those are your two main guides to knowing what's going on up and down the neck of the guitar. How about one more? Let's talk about, uh, let's talk about good old Chuck Berry for a minute. We talk about the A power chord based at five. Well, that A power chord, if I use my index and ring, 5 on the E string, 7 on the A string, that can turn into a nice Chuck Berry style riff. With uh, my pinky jumping up way up high at 9. I know it's a big stretch for a lot of you. I remember when it was a big stretch for me too, and as time goes on, your fingers can, can get up there with a little practice, a little help from a teacher. So now what I'm playing is a Chuck Berry style power chord riff, a shuffle riff, you might call it. But the important thing to know is that it'd be called an A shuffle because of the note A right there. If the song changed and there was a G shuffle, if that's what was needed, there's my G at three, a C shuffle. Okay. I couldn't do this as quickly, and I couldn't identify the names of what I'm doing without knowing the names of every note on the sixth string. Now, I hope you learned something today. I look forward to hearing from you. I'm going to play a little bit before it's time to go. Thanks for watching the Music Corner.